Hi, I'm Charlene Laney, co-founder of Newmaker Financial and Certified Financial Planner. Today, we are here for our fourth segment in an interview with Michael Idelson of Evolved Legal. He is an estate planning attorney here in Denver, Colorado, and we are here today to talk about new parents. So say you are a new parent, you know, you're maybe in your late 20s, your early 30s, early 20s, or hey, maybe even in your 40s, and you just had your first child. Um, this baby is taking up a lot of your time and energy. You're likely not sleeping. You're probably also not thinking about who to name as your guardian <laughs> for this child in the event that you and your partner were to pass away simultaneously. So, um, Michael, I would love if you could tell us a little bit about guardianship, why it's important, and you know, in the event that someone hasn't named a guardian, what what exactly happens? Like, what's the harm in it? Yeah, yeah. So um, the way guardianship works, it actually it, it falls under the probate court um, as well, which is kind of interesting. Um, but basically, um, the, you know, when when something happens to um, the parents, whether they're incapacitated or or pass away, um, the court um, is in a position where in the court needs to figure out, you know, who is going to be in the best interest uh, to take care of this child or children. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you know, without any recommendation from the parents, it can put the court in kind of this interesting position of trying to make this decision um, without without the parents' input. So really, the only input that the parents can give is by um, you know having one of these forms in advance, saying you know who do they want to name as the guardian. Um, if that guardian can't serve, who do they want to name as an alternate? Um, a lot of people don't don't always think about the second piece as well, because, um, you know, there's a chance that whoever you name first might not be able to serve or, um, you know, if it's a married couple too, you want to make sure to specify that, um, you know, you want both of them to serve or if one of them can't, then what do you want to have happen? So there's a lot to, there's a lot to think through there. Um, but going to your second question, um, you know, if, if somebody's not named, um, really the court uses the best judgment possible to look at who might be in the best interest of the child. And maybe, maybe that's somebody that, that you would have named yourself, but maybe it's not. And so it really leaves a big question mark. Um, that's why I strongly encourage new parents to think about, think about doing this and, um, you know, really think hard about who they want to take care of their children in the event that they can't. Um, again, it's not just limited to, um, if, if a birth parent passes away, but it's also, um, if let's say both parents are in an accident, um, and are alive, but like in a coma or, right. you know, just don't have the capacity anymore to take care of their children. Um, that's why this is, so, this is so important. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I wonder with that court process of designation for whomever might be most suitable to serve as guardian, are there certain family members that the court tends to look at preferentially, like, you know, your siblings are assuming that they are also adults or, or your parents, assuming that they're also alive, or does it not really follow any sort of formula? Yeah, you know, good, good question. Um, I think those things can all come into play. Um, sometimes um, there can be an advocate appointed for the child, um, almost to serve as like the child's best interest. Um, but um, really, it's like a case by case analysis. And, um, you know, there's, there's typically a hearing and the real kind of legal standard is best interest of the child. Um, and sometimes that could be a family member, but sometimes not. And um, again, sometimes it might have been who the birth parents would have picked, but sometimes not. And the court leans very heavily on um, the birth parents' preferences. So that's why, um, again, it's so important. I just can't stress enough how important it is to have um, this in place because it's real. As a parent, it's really the only say that you get. Um, before something happens to you and wouldn't you rather a court know that um you know absolutely before yeah. something happens and and again and just like when we were talking about estate planning generally just because you um you know, make this decision it doesn't it doesn't make it a reality that something's going to happen to you definitively it just all it all it is is it it basically puts a plan in place in the event that something does so 
Um, and something's going to happen to to all of us, you know. Um, you know, we're, it's just a, it's not a matter of if; it's a matter of when. And so, um, again, far far more you know far better and more important to kind of think about these issues, you know, now while you're able to, rather than later. Right, and for for the sake of the people that you in theory, love the most, right? Your, your exactly. children. And if you think yeah. about the complexity of your own life and uh, the relationships that are there, it's mm -hmm. probably not as simple as what the court is going to see, even assuming that they're not overloaded with cases, assuming that they have all the time to try to understand the complexity of your life. Um, right we have to assume that they're not going to understand it as well as you are, right? So it's, exactly. it's important, just name the guardian yourself ahead of time. And like Michael said, it's not something that's going to bring that to fruition. <laughs> and, and even if it happens one after the other, <laughs> there's no way we could know that it caused it anyway. So um, that's right. So yeah, very important naming guardianship for your children. Thank you for talking to us about this super important topic because like we've been talking about these last few weeks with estate planning, even if you have something set up already with your estate plan and you feel like you have your ducks in order, anytime there's a big life change, like bringing new family into the world, <laughs> or perhaps someone has passed away in your life, or maybe you go through a divorce, or maybe you get married. Any of these big life changes are the perfect opportune time to reassess what you've previously designated, um, or just to remind you that you need to get it done in the first place. So I'm so glad you mentioned that. And that I, that's such an important piece too. Um, you know, just because you just because you established this once in life doesn't mean that you can expect that it won't change, especially as right. those that you've designated age or um, you know, circumstances change and they can no longer serve. So I'm so happy that so happy you mentioned that. That's such an important piece of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, it speaks to the partnership between financial advisors <laughs> and estate planners. We put our two brains together and our, our clients are taken care of as well as their families. So thank you, those of you who are watching and have been watching the last few videos. If you haven't yet, please catch up on the other videos that we have posted the last few weeks. We've already covered a lot of really important ground when it comes to estate planning and the things that are commonly missed or not thought of. Um, and we're here to look out for you and help you with that. So we've got one more video topic we'll be sharing with you next week. So stay tuned for that. Thank you again for watching and let us know what else you want to hear about. Bye-bye.